Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It's 5.30 on November 22nd. It's so awesome to have everyone here who's showed up live. And so awesome to have everybody who's watching the recording watch the recording. So thank you. Um, tonight is our third webinar of the four part webinar series for ICT or the Intuitive Coach Training Program. So welcome. We'll do a mini meditation in one second, but before we get started, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dr. Divi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and I'm Lynette Brown. Hi, guys. <laughs> You've met us by now. So I'm going to bring up SEP. So in case that has to take off, and then we'll just get started in the process. So give me a step, step. Let me bring you up. As most of you know, um, we have invited people who have done the course before to share their experience. And we don't, we don't interview them. We don't do Q&A. We do nothing. So they volunteer to come. So SEP is here. So everyone, this is SEP. Hello, everyone. So nice to join you this evening. So do you want me to just talk a little bit? Anything you want to say. <laughs> they they literally you don't tell you anything when, when you do this. They just throw you in. Um, These are people who are in the presence of like maybe considering it or have already registered for the course. And there there's questions or you know what it is like what was it for you what did you get what did you get well back? yeah so i'll just tell you a little bit about me so i am a lawyer turned intuitive coach i took the course last year so that was 2020 and it's funny because obviously when we signed up for the course we had no idea this whole covid thing would be happening and for me it was as if my inner guidance was telling me to sign up for this course and so i had been working with dr dibby before that at, um, for a couple months before and she told me about this course and I was like oh yeah maybe maybe I'll consider it I don't know um, I was working full-time at the time and yeah um, really I didn't know if I was going to do it or not and the deadline just started approaching and I thought to myself like will I be able to afford this will I have the time to do this like do I want to commit? I've been I've been reading so much about this stuff beforehand. I've been doing so much self practice my entire life. Don't I know enough? And that internal guidance, I finally listened to it. I didn't even actually read too much about what the outline of the criteria was. I just had so much trust in Dr. Divi and I had heard so much about Lynette throughout working with Dr. Divi and I signed up and truly it was the best thing i've done in my entire life it is the biggest investment you can make in yourself um and i don't think i would be here and i have shivers just telling you this but i don't think i would be here in the capacity that i am without this it um has shifted my self-awareness in ways that i could have never done having just read books you actually have to embody the changes that you're learning about and because it's consistent and you're showing up it's very very deep work um so you do have to be ready in that sense to make the commitment but if you do your entire life will change and i saw things about myself throughout the year that i had never even noticed and i've always been pretty successful in my life but having been able to peel away all these layers of self sabotage and other things i actually discovered my intuition a lot deeper too throughout the work and that's why i decided to show up as an intuitive coach over the past year also i didn't know i would be doing this and then to have that strength and power to step forward and tell other people who are also lawyers that this is what i'm doing and i've actually impacted a lot of other professionals too and they're open to this work because they saw that i was doing this work so that's just what came out right now um, i'd be like honored to answer any questions that any of you have about the course, the practices, what it was like going throughout, but they just hold such a beautiful container and it's so much work for them to guide us through this journey for an entire year. And you become so close with all the other participants in there. We're still great, great friends. We have these amazing um, connections. And then I decided to mentor and help out the group that's going through the ICT course this year. To, so, to see them grow so much has been really fun too. So the community keeps on giving back. Um, so the, I don't wanna take too much of your time up, but that's just a little brief piece of what it's meant to me. And, and it's the, like, honestly, you guys are the teachers that I've been searching for my entire life. And for you to do this type of work has been very, very meaningful. So thank you. And yeah, I'm really excited to see what, who signs up for your next year and, and maybe I'll mentor again. Yay. Yeah. Does, does anybody have any questions for Seth? You can either put up your hand or type in and I can grab you if there are any questions, but 
question look like right now? Looks like we're good. Awesome. Yeah, I can always throw my social media handle too. If anyone wants to reach out, you are welcome to in a private setting. Thank you. So that was good. awesome. So thank you, Steph. That's sweet. You're welcome. Thank you. I will. Um, oh wait, there's a there's a question that just came in. No, uh, I'm. Did, did, did I give up law? law? <laughs> no, I am. I am part time in law right now. Um, and actually, the opportunities in law that have been presented to me over the last little while have shifted quite a bit. I always had a perception that law had to be a particular way or that big law was bad. But as I started to shift, they actually started to shift and they've been offering new positions that I didn't even think they would be open enough to do. So that's been kind of fun. Um, there's another question. What is the biggest impact it made on you? Do you have an example? Hmm. Biggest impact. There's been so many big impacts, so to choose is the big one. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, my relationship with different partners in my life. I was continuously bringing in a pattern of a similar relationship over and over again, and I was able to break that pattern and instantly started attracting in new relationships. And each time I dated somebody new, it was more aligned to who I was looking for. Um, the work one was an example. So I had a perception that law had to be a particular way. I had to show up in a particular way in law. I had to be a professional in one sense or another. I wasn't allowed to be myself. Um, and that kind of, that illusion was broken. And the opportunities that are coming up now in the legal space, I didn't even know that they existed and they don't exist. They're creating them for me. So that's been another thing that you get to see. Um, there's things around like my childhood. I didn't think I had issues. A lot of people, you know, they talk about the trauma and really intense trauma that they went through. Yeah, I had a hard upbringing, but maybe I didn't realize that there were particular things that created my personality traits now um, growing up. So I was able to unwind those and unfold them. There's a lot of, uh, we call them like sub-personalities or ways that we are day to day that we don't realize are conditioned within us. And so to be able to unravel those, you actually free yourself from yourself. And then you can show up the way you want to, whether it's particular goals that you want, whether it's bringing things into your life. If anything, I've just freed myself from myself in so many ways as if like you're in a cage and you break open. So there is a lot of that. I hopefully that answers your question. Okay, and a couple of thank yous that came up too. That yeah. Was beautifully said. Thanks. I, I never know like what's gonna come out of my mouth, right? That's the beautiful thing about it, right? Just speaking from the heart, baby. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Seth. Thank you for sharing. Um, so I'm gonna take you off the spotlight and take off the ground. You left them your handles okay. if you want to contact you that off. Yeah. Awesome. Please do. Thank you so much. Tomorrow. See you later. Bye. Bye. Um, okay, perfect. Awesome. Well, uh, we don't pay these people. I'm joking. No, I know. I was just re getting ready to say it is such a um, humbling space to be in because this is something Divi and I are truly called to do, right? And there is an exchange, right? And to witness somebody like Sep come in, who's a lawyer, who's in the legal world, and watch her shift and to watch the legal world around her shift and provide things for her. It's like, it's uncanny. It's uncanny. It's, you can't make it up. You just can't make it up, right? And one thing I want to share just for people to understand, um, Sep was talking about how she's read all the books. She's at the law of the application. She meditates a ton. Um, she talked a lot about embodiment. And one thing that we have found in the Air Force, and I alluded to this on our first call, because there's so many layers, um, you have your coaching buddy, you have the big group, you have your pod groups, you have your mentor, you, and all of them are assigned intuitively. What happens in those smaller groups and in the big groups is you actually see yourself, you witness yourself. And that's how you start to see these parts of yourself that are keeping you in a cage. I thought the way she described it was so perfect because I've never heard of it described that way, but that's exactly what it is, is you're in a cage with yourself. And when you free yourself up, that's when everything changes. So, yeah. So, such awesome. a great analogy too. Right? So good. Yeah, it was. So awesome, Rita. So thank you again. Thank you, Sep. Um,
So tonight we're going to make sure you have a pen and paper. Of course, if you're driving, you get off the handle on that one. But tonight we're, we're, we're going to be jumping into abundance. We're going to be talking about money and abundance and the energy of abundance. So welcome. I know that's a hot topic for a lot of people. So before we actually get started, take a second, just close your eyes and bring yourself into your body and breath. So with your eyes closed, just everybody together, take an exhale, good. And follow that with a low, slow inhale. Moving into your exhale. Set your belly rises and your belly falls. Soften your shoulders. Open your heart. Soften your palms. And just let the breath come in and go out. Inhale. And exhale. Belly rises and belly falls. Collecting your energy from the day, regardless of what happened, just wherever you might have left your energy, might have been had a busy day at work, maybe interaction with your boss, your partner, just go pick up your energy where you might have deposited it and bring all of your energy here with us tonight at 540 on November 22nd. Big breath in and out. Excellent. When you're ready, move your shoulders, move your fingers. Gently open your eyes and come back. Welcome everybody. See a few yawns because we're moving something big. So we're going to be working on abundance, money, all of that kind of conversations. So where I'm going to start with is to ask ourselves, what are our beliefs around money? So most people think of money as the solid object, like a $20 bill or a $50 bill, loony, a toonie, whatever. People think of money as a solid thing. And most of you know, who have done a bit of spiritual work or a lot, money is an energy, but often there's a gap between thinking money is a solid thing that's in my wallet versus money is an energy. And even though over the year, of course, we have a whole section on money, we have a section on intuition, we actually weave money throughout the whole course. We weave, weave intuition throughout the whole course. Because I personally, I think Lynette can piggyback this, intuition and money are the two funny things that people kind of have, go wig-waggy about. People have very solid beliefs about money that can be changed, okay? But it takes work, which is why it's something we work on throughout the course. And most of us think of limitations around money, right? And what we also don't understand is most of us have beliefs about money that we actually picked up from our mom and dad. And most of us have this kind of, funny relationship with money because we have never developed a relationship with money. It's just something that's there. We're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll think about it on the third of every month, right? But really money is an energy that wants our attention, not from fear and not from obsession, but how can we have a relationship with money? So before we get going any further, we're just going to do some, we're going to do some lighter digging, then deeper digging, then deeper. So let's just start talking through the chat box. What are your beliefs about money? What were you taught about money? What do you think about money? For example, and start typing them in. These are, we're, just, we're just going cursor. We're just starting at the top layer. Do you think money is evil? Do you think money is hard to come by? Do you think money is something that people fight about? Um, what are your current beliefs about money? And just thank you, Lynette. And just start typing them in. What do you got? Um, it's at a distance. Awesome, Andrea. It's kind of over there. Over there. It's scarce. Perfect now. Is necessary, but not everything. Got it, Kari. Perfect. There is never enough. Beautiful, Nick. Um, that it's hard to make a lot of money. Thank you. Be careful, writes Kim. Uh, Dana writes, and money is a way, oops, they're too fast on me. <laughs> money is a way to take care of others. It's, it's to give away. Got it. Raya writes, there's never enough for us. Melissa writes, some people have it and some don't. Tamara writes, there was never enough money to pay the bills for my mom and pop. Got it. So you see how we're, we're just started. We're maybe two minutes into this and we can already feel this is a belief. And then Tamara writes also, we were spoiled. Got it? No matter how much I try to manifest, I'm just getting by, writes Andrea. Awesome. This is so great. We all know those manifestation skills. December 30th is going to come around. We're going to sign up for a, a um, you know, one of those things where you, those, what do they call it at? Where you make a vision board. Oh, yeah. vision board. Why isn't it coming? Right. We all do those things. Resolutions. The resolutions, right? So we're going to spend 
basically the whole year. We're not talking about money every single day. But I can speak for myself. I come from what a lot of you guys were, wrote, work hard for money. Somebody wrote in, my parents lived um, in lack as farmers and they were always surviving, okay? So I grew up very in a very like immigrant family approach to money. My parents had money. My dad was a professor at the university. So I had a decent middle income. We lived in a smaller city, not a high socioeconomic status, but there was never enough. I always had the hand-me-downs, right? Because I'm the youngest of four kids. And, you know, when I would go shopping as an adult, I would never shop for myself. Both my husbands would comment on that. You never. So I had a lot of work to do around my neural pathways around money, okay? Money was always scarcity. But I worked a lot with Lynette. I did a lot of the work on money. And you guys are going to get that through the year. And I can tell you a thousand percent, I'm living proof, as is Lynette, that as you work with money, all of those things that your parents struggled with, you can shift through and you can have freedom and success. Lynette, they're guiding me to ask you if you don't mind sharing a little bit about your story about money from before to where you are now. Definitely. I was raised by a single mom and <clears throat> we money was difficult struggle. I mean, um, it wasn't unusual for us to have cereal for dinner because that's all we had, right? A bowl of cereal, only one bowl of cereal. Can't have two, only one, right? And my mother worked really hard to support us. She worked two jobs. It was all, you know, she was exhausted all the time. And as I came into my, into my awareness, my consciousness of this work, I noticed how I had held on to her struggle. I had to work hard. Nobody, you know, the legal world, you got to work hard and be seen, especially as a woman, da, 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 right? And once I started doing this work, all that changed. And my money just started flowing in. It became, it became a, an energetic tool that was easy to work with, an energy that I could direct giving and receiving and it changed everything it changed everything for me so um i'm gonna so i wanted you to hear a couple of testimonials of people who have come from lack or learning that money is you know not enough and have shifted it but so what i'm about to teach you now before we go into another process is some different ways to think about money because i always think of how i was raised around money as being a very solid thing and hard to come by and where I think of money now as basically a 180 degree shift. So it, it takes a while. So I'm gonna introduce some concepts that may or may not land at this second, but give us a year, you will be, you will love all of these. Yes. The first one I want you to understand is that money is actually a spiritual gift, okay? Mm. Money is, is, I think of money as the physical deposit of my energetic alignment with spirit. When I am aligned with my spirit, my divine, my love, my purpose, my, uh, the money shows up. Now you probably are thinking, well, money doesn't follow the sky, Divi, like rain. No, but that's how, that's when clients find me. That's how clients find me. And I'll be, I'm going to be hundred percent honest with you. I have not built my business by strife. I've not built my business by Facebook ads. I have not built my business by putting up posters. I built my business hundred percent through these tools. 100%, okay? And when I'm aligned, then things show up. And guys, you need to know, there are sometimes I'm not aligned and that's perfectly fine. And what happens is you learn, the more you learn the concepts of money and energy, the more you learn to go, oh, it's actually super simple. And the hard part about money is that we have all of these belief systems that are counter-effective or counter-intuitive to money. And just like Steph said, which was so perfect that Steph came today, it, you can study it all you want, but the application is the embodiment. And I would never say it's hard, but it's being in a container where it's like, oh, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm feeling. Well, that's what's going on. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about spirituality money because this came in super loud. I know knew why they wanted me to talk to you about this because Yesterday I was walking home, can't remember where I was coming from, I was walking home and um, I was about a couple blocks from my house and I ran into a couple who, they recognized me, I didn't recognize them. And the, um, our son played hockey until he was about eight or nine. So he's 16 now, so this is like 10, seven, eight years ago. And it was another hockey mom and dad and she recognized me instantly. She's like, Divi. And I was like, did one of those, who are you kind of conversations? And I had my hat on, they had their hats. So we took our hats off, I was like, 
think I recognized you. Right away, she said, I have your book and I love it. I was like, oh, did you buy it from Banyan, which is the local spiritual bookstore? She said, I don't know. I can't remember Banyan, Amazon, da, 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 da. And then the conversation ensued and she's an energetic, uh, train. She, she did energy, she does energy work, but she learned it from a certain college here in town. And that college with COVID um, has withdrawn that program. This is all part of the 10 minute, um, you know, West First Avenue conversation I had. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that that college took away that program because of COVID. She's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to restart. And I said, that's so great. And this is the part about money. And I, and I said, that's so great. Um, that's awesome. You're going to restart it. She said, yeah, we don't know how. And, you know, the money and da, da, da. And I was like, yeah, it's, you know, a lot of work to run a run a college type of thing in British Columbia because I do it, right? And um, and then we were talking a bit about that. She said, oh, but, 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 but I'm not doing it for money. And right away, pulled right back, you know? And the area of town I live in is a, an affluent part of town. And I, I know that they're affluent and not that that's wrong or right, right. But it was like right away, she was like, ah, I'm not doing it for money. Uh, 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 nope, not. And the energy was like, that would be bad. And I'm not putting this on her. It was beautiful. And I was like, got it, like awesome. So I knew that was something This literally happened less than 12 hours ago. I knew this was something that they wanted me to talk about, okay? So we're gonna talk about money and spirituality because this is something a lot of spiritual people run into with money because there's this really deep seated thought that money is not spiritual. That if you are working as a spiritual person, you should not be taking money for it because you're helping people, okay? And how many of us, by the way, by show of hands or typing in, because I know a lot of you have your cameras off, how many of us have experienced that money is not spiritual? Money is, if you're doing something spiritual, you shouldn't take money for it. Exactly, yeah, there's some hands up. So there's a huge belief that money and spirituality go in opposite categories. Exactly, Tamara. And I know I grew up as a Hindu, and you know the guy who ran the temple, he didn't get paid, right? You don't get paid. And yet the thing is, money isn't good or bad. Money isn't right or wrong. Money isn't evil. The hoarding of money, the obsession of money, I would never call that evil, but that's not necessarily good. Or It's just, that's what people are afraid of. But money is an energy. Money is about alignment with spirit. In fact, when we're aligned with spirit and in, in the energy of love, money flows in. It's a physical manifestation of that alignment. What could not be more spiritual than money? But we have all these crazy beliefs about money and spirituality. So money is not evil. Money is not a source of happiness, right, Lynette? Money is not the easy way out. Money is not a solution to life's problems. Hoarding as money is not the answer. But in fact, remember I talked about 180 degree difference, remember? Money is actually the physical deposit of our alignment with the divine. I sometimes think of it like rain because it rains a lot here in Vancouver. For it to rain or, or snow, let's use snow. The humidity has to be a certain level. The temperature needs to be a certain level. We need to create the atmosphere and then snow falls, right? Or rain falls. Money is the same. Mm. If I'm in line with spirit, if I'm in flow, if I'm in trust and I'm in love, guess what happens? money flows. And this is this is why it's not that it's hard. It takes us a year to have you guys figure that out. I'm saying that with love, right? Because it, we have so many deep belief systems about money. So I always show you it's 180 degree difference. Okay. And money is just an energy. But like Sep said so beautifully, you can read all the books, you can study all the material, but it's the application. One thing that they get they guided me to say before I started as humans, and for those of you who are on next week, we're having a guest on who's going to share this with you. As humans, we're taught limitations of everything. Limitations of health, limitations of money, limitations of sex, limitation of fun. What if there's no limits? What if there's no limit to fun? What if there's no limit to how healthy you can be? What if there's no limit to how vibrant or juicy or incredible your sex life could be? What if there's no limit on money? What if there's an unlimited source of money that you have access to? What if being born as a human, being born as part and parcel of the divine in incarnation of source, that's who we all are, you were born with a safety deposit box full of money. The key's inside you though. And we're gonna spend the whole year kind of, right? 
because the key is inside of you, but we are all born with it. But we have to dig in and start to heal and start to replace a lot of our limiting beliefs around money. I'm getting a timeout. Lynette, what do you want to add? They're saying, bring Lynette in. I, you know, the, one of the things um, that I think is so powerful how this course has evolved is, you know, the whole, com the money conversation, understanding the energy of money, understanding it's a tool, and then being able to practice it throughout the course. I mean, that's one of the things that we actually track is how much money you've allowed in, right? So it's like, we're really measuring, we're being logical and creative, right? We want to bridge. We want to utilize all parts of us, not just, okay, forget everything. Yes, we learn some powerful things and we can only be our parents' children. And part of the reason we chose those parents is so that we can maybe heal the patterns that they could not yet heal, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, it's an exciting thing throughout the year that's, that's being traced throughout the money, the intuition. It's like, it's all being created and built and, and built upon for the entire year. And it really does. It's at, at that point, it's like, oh my gosh, this works. Makes a difference. Thank you. So let's talk about cause and effect. Okay. Many think, many people think money is a cause and my effect is my ability to go buy something. What if the cause is your alignment to source, your alignment to love, and the effect is money? I mean, we've all heard it. Do something you love and they will come, right? We've all heard that. But how do you start to practice that? There are a lot of limiting beliefs people have around money or that, that actually create their lack. So how many of us in the room and thumbs up for those of you at home typing in or just hands up if you're live. How many of have, us have worthiness conversation? Like, I'm not worthy enough. Who am I to do this? Thank you. Okay. How many of us have thoughts like, who am I, like, you know, if there, there's only like this much money, if they have some, then I can't have another, right? Some of us thought that way. I knew I, knew I grew up um, on the rich streets in Windsor, Ontario, well, wealthy. And there was one home that was a million dollars, like one home where there was one family that were multimillionaires. Everyone's like, oh, look at them. They're the family that makes a million dollars, right? Oh my God. One family I knew for the first 18 years of my life. I know so many millionaires. It's not even funny now. My parents don't know anymore because they still live on those three streets, right? And what I'm trying to get at is there's more money now than there ever has been on the planet. That's not because somebody from Mars came in and trucked money. It's not like that. There's no limitation. So if somebody else has money does not mean you can't have enough. This is really, really, really big in the coaching world. People think, oh, there's enough coaches out there. Lynette and I will go like this. There's not enough coaches, right, Lynette? There's not enough intuitive coaches. There's not enough. So we want you to know that everything is about belief. Everything is about how you feel and your energy because you're emitting this energy all the time. And then it's going to come right back. So let's go into mini process and kind of see what happens. So go ahead and close your eyes. Take a few inhales and exhales. And just breathe slowly. On your next breath, take yourself into a beautiful place in nature. This may be a place that you visit often. Maybe it's a place you've never been to before. The most important thing about this place is that you feel safe and comfortable. Comfortable and safe. Just breathe in and out. In this safe and comfortable place, notice all the things. The colors, the smells. Notice the temperature against your skin in this safe, beautiful place. Out of the corner of your eye, far in the distance, but close enough that you can see her, you see the female influence who had the most on you around money. 
This may be your mother, your grandmother, your stepmother, whoever that was. I just want you to observe her from the distance. Start to notice what were her beliefs around money. And just start to jot them down. down. What did you hear her say? I have to save these 30 cents on the bread at the grocery store. I have to save this food to send it back to my home country. What did you hear her say? And just start to write it down. What were the influences from your female care provider around money? Breathe, everyone, breathe. And if your mom wasn't there, that's okay. Was there a grandmother, a stepmother? Maybe there wasn't female, and that's okay. Just keep writing. What did you learn? Just observing her, what did you learn? Keep breathing. What did you learn by watching her? Another minute or two. Great. Now you know what's coming next. You're gonna wrap up with your mom for the female energy. Now close your eyes and off from the distance now, you know what's coming. Your father figure, your grandfather, your stepfather, whoever was the male figure, your dad around money. And maybe he wasn't there and that's okay. What did you learn from the masculine around money growing up? What was his approach to money? What did you see? And just start to write it down. Maybe his approach was work hard, hustle. What did you see? And just write it down. Keep breathing, guys, in and out. Another couple minutes. I know a lot of you, like myself, could write a whole book on this one. Take another minute. Okay. And just put your pen down to clear the energy for a sec. Close your eyes and recenter yourself in your body. And exhale that energy away from you. Just breathe it out. Now on the next breath, in a minute, you are going to reflect on your own thoughts, your own beliefs around money. Take a few breaths, leave your parents alone. Now in a moment, you're gonna pick up the pen and just start to write your own. What are your own? What are you living right now? And go ahead and begin. Some of them might be similar to theirs, some might be completely different, 
This is just noticing. Right now on November 22nd, 2021, what is your reflection around money? Breathe in and out. Breathe in, Keep breathing, guys. Keep breathing. It, can it be a new emerging truth today, Karen? Yes. You can write down your new emerging truth today. Just keep writing whatever your current beliefs around money are. A couple more minutes. I'm going to ask one more question before you go into the next part of the meditation. If a child was observing you, what would they say? your attitude towards money is. That sometimes helps us to figure out our beliefs about money. If a child was observing you, what would they say? Just breathe guys, in and out. Awesome. One more minute. I know you guys have so much to write. You're so cute. All right, put your pen down. They're like, nope, stop them. Take that. We'll stop again. <laughs> Go ahead and close your eyes again. Take an exhale from all of that. Settle into your body. Go back to that place in nature and just breathe. On your next breath, invite in your divine support team. Your angels your guides, your abundance guide, your ancestors, any deities you believe in, bring them all in. And just see yourself right now encircled by their presence. Most of you can actually start to feel their love that they've got for you. And just breathe in and breathe out. Slow breath in and long breath out. Inhale and exhale. As you feel their love and their presence around you, I want you to notice they don't see lack and they don't see worth. Ask them now, how divinely wealthy am I meant to be? Ask that question. Breathe. And you may see, you may sense, you may feel glitter. I keep seeing red scarves, gold, a waterfall of money. And you'll notice there's no attitudes of this being right or being wrong, just an energy. Just keep breathing in and out. On your next breath, ask your guides, your divine support team, how can I improve my relationship with money? And again, you may feel like you receive a response. Your mind might think you're making it up, but they're speaking to you. And just breathe into that. And one last question. Who would I be if I allowed all of this wealth in? And notice that in your body. 
who would I be in the world if I let all of this wealth in and just breathe into that feeling? Some of you might want to stay here for a few extra moments, conversing and being in this energy of love and support and gold glittery energy. Others of you are feeling ready. When you're ready, I'd like you to open your eyes and start to write down what would your beliefs be if you believed what your guides believe around you about money? They might be the same. They might be different. What would you believe? Who would you believe, be if you actually took on these thoughts and these beliefs that you just felt with your divine support team? And, just, and again, it might be the same. It might be different. And just breathe. Feel how much you are loved and supported. Who would I be if I believed the divine support team around money? Keep breathing. Another minute. So much coming out of your pants, it's awesome. If you haven't already, gently put your pen down. Close your eyes again. Reconnect with your divine support team, your abundance guide, and thank them. Thank yourself. Thank them for showing up. Thank them for helping you. Thank them for guiding you and trusting in you. And the more time you spend here, you're going to see and perceive and know that lack is not possible. And you, once you thank them, Gently open your eyes and coming back. So I'm curious what came up for you in that meditation. We'll start talking through the chat box in a second. A couple other things I want to say before we start the conversation. The universe is not built on sacred scarcity. In fact, it's based on abundance. If you're not sure, just go, to, go up to Western. You'll see all the abundance of nature or anywhere in the world where there's nature, you're going to see it. Scarcity is human. Abundance is, is the most natural thing in the world. Last thing before I hear from you guys how that was. I want you to realize that money is a relatively new invention, relatively. Before we used to, you know, I'd go up to Raya and say, hey, Raya, I'm a potato girl. Raya would be like, I do eggs and we'd swap, right? Money is just a form of exchange. That's it. And that's hard for us who grew up with money, the internet to understand, but it's just a form of exchange. So your potatoes, your eggs are the gift you were born with to bring to the planet. And as coaches, Intuitive coaches, we are literally expressing our gift of love in exchange for what humans call money. Could be potatoes, could be eggs, could be anything. So take a few breaths. So I'm curious, what came up for you in that meditation? What did you notice about your mom and dad? What did you notice about you? I know I'm asking a lot of questions. Start typing in. Lynette, how was that for you? That's awesome. You know what I'm blown away by? <clears throat> I've been in this work for over 30 years, right? At every time I do this process, every time I look at this, there's even more that's revealed to me. 
right? Even more. And I love it because I always come to the space of spaciousness that I'm infinite energy, Ooh. right? I'm infinite energy. And so that means if I'm infinite energy, that I'm in there with the money, I'm in there with it all, right? Even after all these, you know, there's always room for more. There's always room for learning and understanding and facing ourselves more. So I, I love that. I love this process. So thanks, Debbie. You're welcome. And I'll, I'm going to start answer the comments. I'm curious what you guys got when you met your divine support team. What did you get about money? It was different than your mom and dad. When I was actually teaching that meditation, Wayne Dyer's energy came in and said, please remind them money is a gift, a tool to play with. To be given away, to be shared, is just a tool. He was the ultimate at that, having fun with money. Start addressing some of these things. So Andrew writes in, if someone is born into money, and Linnell gives us some tea because I'm going to read it. Someone is born into money, is that energy from the womb? And the same as being born into an area without food, like Ethiopia, is it an energy you're born into? Well, I'm not sure. Well, so you're born into it, but it's because you aligned with it. You created that before, you know, you created that storyline. You created that um, alignment with the soul, your soul group. This is the lessons. These are the messages. This is what I'm going to, this is going to be my, this is going to be the soil that my seeds being dropped into for our earth school. So I'm going to, this is what I'm going to have a choice to sprout or grow or right. Um, the money being born into money, there's still there's still money issues. I work with really wealthy clients and there's still money issues, whether you have it or you don't, right? It's how we hold it and what our concept of it is. Did I answer her question? Did I? I think you did. I think you did perfectly, yeah. Um, Raya writes in, she has so much energy flowing, lots of discomfort in her body. Ooh. Interesting. Ooh. That's good, Ryan. It's like move that discomfort. You're moving things through, honey. Move, let that stuff flow through you. And there's like, there's, I feel like sometimes when we become frightened, especially as adults and we get older and we're like, oh, it's just me. It's up to me. I don't have mommy and daddy aren't here to take care of me. It's me that we can kind of get a little hardened and we protect ourselves. And when we do this work with money, we open up. It's some of that crystallization that happens to us in our chakras and our body the tight the the hardness that happens we start opening up and it does there's movement there can actually be that discomfort so i see that as a good sign me too 100 percent, because it's just showing you where those blocks are <clears throat> funny how my voice is going right as we speak yeah, i feel it too tell it too because sometimes speaking your truth and this is <laughs> riot can be very hard right <clears throat> So welcome to being an intuitive. Uh, Tamara writes, and this is a great one, piggyback to the body. Tamara writes, and my abundance makes me feel guilty because guilt causes pain, Brian. And Tamara, I know you know that. My abundance makes me feel guilty, she writes. My divine support team told me that my abundance helps everyone around me. So true. The guilt stops the flow and prevents me from sharing my abundant energy. Exactly. That's brilliant, Tamara. That is brilliant. Publish it. Put your little trademark on that right there. So true. So true. Just like, um, you know, we help each other with love. If here in Vancouver, in, in BC, they've had some floods and everyone's helping out, sending money, sending diapers, doing sandbags. No difference with money. No. You've got money, send it. That's probably Tamara why Wayne Dyer came in. He was the ultimate of just like, right? Giving it. Awesome. I see. I'm glad you see that. And you writes in, I remembered my parents had money for nice stuff like the best clothes, the new house, the cars, but they had pop or money, or probably poor or money, poor money management, I'm guessing, when it came to money for creating memories. Yeah, 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 Ooh. that's big. We take that's these on. Big. And I think that's gonna be, that's big for you, Andrea. Yeah. yeah. A lot of today's class guys is about unearthing how much stuff we have around money, right? Remember the 180, right? Nick writes in, the, this one was really challenging. Awesome. When I, get, when I got to my own story, it was very uncomfortable. Yes. But my divine support team reminded me that the money energy is flowing and changing a lot, capital a lot, which is why it feels uncomfortable right now. Bang on. Bang Especially on. when we're not used to receiving it. Think about that, Nicholas. 
right? Think about that. I mean, it's like when we're not used to receiving because our parents have taught us that we have to struggle or to be worthy to have money, you have to work triple time. Everybody else, you got to work harder than everybody. You got all these things. It's kind of, we're not open to having it. It's powerful. Love all of these. Jessica writes in, divine support. I get to be me, but free to create and do what I need to do. I don't, don't tell myself no, or look at the number, for example, the cost of property and tell myself I'll never have that much. Just look at what I want, need to carry my vision. Yes. Yes. Love that. Power yeah. there. So powerful. These are awesome. Awesome. I know. Uh, Dana writes in from the meditation, mom, never re- rely on a man for money. Oh, Ooh, my mom too, girl. That's my mom too. My mom and dad both actually make sure you can support yourself. Her mom said, dad said money comes. If you just keep moving forward, I got that one too. keep hustling, keep moving. That was my dad used to say the same thing. Keep moving. Um, especially in the hard times, one foot in front of the other equals money will come. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, heart, heart. Okay. Linda writes in my mother taught me as a girl that if I didn't have the money to buy what I wanted or needed. I didn't need it. I didn't really need it. Oh, interesting. Lots of scarcity in my childhood based on lack of money and resources from the parents and the ancestors. But I know money is an energy now as an adult and it flows to me and through me. Yes. As I use it to live my life now. I love that, Linda. I love that. This is Dana again, who wrote about her mom and dad and all that. She writes in her, her guide said, you need to be confident and feel free and let go to let money in. So beautiful. There's too much fear, not around money, but around your abilities. Yes. Mm. Align your energy with your spiritual gifts and calling. Oh, I want to cry. So true, Dana. I love that. God, really I love that. On that one. Yeah, I know so much. Jessica wrote, writes in from my angel cards. I just pulled um, Sandalphon. I don't pronounce that right. Gifts from God. So amazing. I love that. Wow. wow. Linda said to Dana that she was taught the same, taught, her mother taught her, uh, make sure you can make your own money and don't depend on the man. Oh God, so many of us have that. And think about what that does to a relationship. <laughs> like you, you're supposed to lean on each other, right? It's co-collaboration. And you say, don't, de- you don't depend or don't trust your, that man or that person to do their, to Right. We're, we're putting in already. We're telling, you know, relationships to fail. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Raya writes in her divine support team. Let me know that my money story is changing and I'm letting go of the struggle. I'm at ease, worry free, able to live out my dreams, beautiful and wishes. I love that. I will, I will be healed and nurtured as I grow into this new chapter of abundance. Wow. So beautiful. So beautiful. Those are incredible. Those are incredible. And I always find that, oh, you guys are amazing. It just takes that regular kind of reminder, 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 because our minds have all of that crap. And it's not our parents' fault. Most of our parents came from, my parents immigrated, right? Before that, they came from, they were refugees, right? So like there are stories there. A lot of our parents came from more. Your mom was a single mom, right, Lynette? Right. Exactly. Right. And I think your grandparents immigrated, you said last time. Right. From Russia. Right. Right. So do you see how we're not even that many years past healing the stuff? And I believe if we gravitate towards this type of work, it's because like Lynette said earlier, we are saying, okay, I'm going to heal this conversation around money. I'm going to heal the fact that I'm not allowed to dream, to believe, to give to me, like Linda said. Giving to me is the greatest gift. Do I, do I believe I'm allowed? Do you see how there's all these layers, these threads, these intricacies? I know. I know. Lynette, what do you want to add? I just want to thank each and every one of you for opening up and being vulnerable and sharing with us. And those of you who are watching the recording, just know that the space that's being held here is like the vulnerability and the willingness to take a look at these things that seem, they seem small and subtle. Oh yeah, yeah, back to your parents. Everything goes back to the parents, right? But it's more than that. 
right? It's our culture. It's our ancestry, right? It's, it's the land we live on. It's the universe. It's all of it. And so I deeply, Divi and I both, I'm sure I speak to you, we're so grateful that you took the time out of your busy life to spend this hour with us, to, you know, explore and tune in, hopefully tap into your message around money, like where you, where there is space for you to grow and expand. Just thank you for taking the time. Really important. 100%. 100%. And like I keep saying earlier, that 180 degrees, right? <laughs> you know, we jostle with this whole concept of money is energy versus a $100 bill in my bank. Right? And the more we practice with gratitude, which I know we all know, and really when you go get your coffee tomorrow morning, grateful. Mm. Whew, smells good. <sighs> right? And we spend a lot of time through the year course talking about because there's so many different tools and techniques with money from embracing this energy to creating relationships, to healing our parents' wounds, to rewiring our beliefs. Because I truly, truly believe exactly what I said earlier. I believe each of us are born with an infinite safety deposit box of money. It's infinite, infinite. You're born it. You're born with it because you are a divine attribute of source. Each and every one of you named Craig, Nick, Raya, each of you have a different name, but each of you are a divine attribute of source that are here to gift the planet with the gift that you were born with. And with that gift comes exchange, right? And as somebody like Lynette, who grew up with funny conversations about money, give us some time and you will see the shift. You will see it. Doesn't happen overnight. So tonight was really about stirring up the pot for some of you. Okay, not all of you, but some of you. So yes. the other thing, to, can I add this to yeah. that hearing that's important to add this? Um, when Divi was talking about each of you have the, your own energy signature, your own name, your own infinite safety deposit box, nobody can take it. Thank you. Nobody can take your, that, the money that's meant for you. Nobody, so Divi having a lot of money doesn't mean Lynette's not going to have any. Right. So that really keeps us from that space of judgment and they have it. So I don't that uh, right. Projection. Right. So just know nobody can nobody can take anything that's yours. So there's two more comments that came in. Uh, Linda writes in as women, we are meant to receive love and support from our partners. We are meant to give love and respect to our partners. Money energy exchange flows between us daily as we live our lives together. It's so beautiful. Love that. Karen writes in, so when you go to buy your coffee tomorrow, do you feel gratitude for the item you purchased or the money you have for the ability to purchase it? Or both? Or both. And the person making the coffee on the other side. Exactly. And those sweet oats that gave the milk for my oat milk. And the bees that made the honey. All of it. All and the it. cinnamon. Don't forget the cinnamon. Well, oh. Perfect. I love that. Absolutely love that. Awesome. Any comments or questions before we wrap, guys? You guys are amazing tonight because I know money is a big one. In fact, even when I even when we started, I could see some of you guys are they're like, oh, they can feel. I didn't even need to announce this money. I can hear them. I can feel them. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <Yeah. laughs> Confronting. The last question, Andrew writes, and I'm, try I'm trying to feel grateful. I have a job, but I'm irritated. I don't get paid enough. Oh. Wow. So, Andrea, what's your belief about money? Like that you have to work hard and to not, I mean, you're not appreciated for it. That's where I would look. Me too, Jessica. I love oat milk. Yeah. I have a small addiction. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tonight. So we will be back next week um, for our last class, right? Next week's our last one. Okay. And for um, Americans or not, have an amazing Thanksgiving. Because that's this weekend, right? That's right. That's uh, Thursday. It's Thursday. Are you okay working on Monday? Is that your Thanksgiving? Yeah, no, no, no. It's Thursday. No, we've got Thursday till Sunday. Well, no, okay. please. I wasn't sure. Okay. No, no, no. Like, I don't want to interrupt. Okay. Only a certain amount of time with the family. It's good. I didn't have that. 
Oh my God. Oh, Chanel, like, thanks everyone for the oh, <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So love y'all so much. We will be back next Monday. And I hope next you have Monday. the best yeah, Same time. week ever. Big love, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks Thank you. Have Thank a great you. week. Happy Thanksgiving. Love you, darling. Love you too, honey. Bye. Bye. Thank you.